Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be painting on an 11 by 14 canvas panel. The colors that we're going to be using today on the palette include primary yellow, pyrrol red, ultramarine blue, titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and ivory black. These colors are all Cobra water mixable oils, and that's what uh, the paint tubes look like. This is the professional grade. For the medium today that we're going to mix into the titanium white is quick drying medium number 93, also made by Cobra. What I like to do is take a little bit of this medium, and I will just drip it in to my titanium white and then I will use a palette knife to mix it in. And this should help the drying time considerably. And the slowest drying color on this palette is after all the titanium white. So you want to make sure that you mix it well enough. That's all in that mixture and of course always remember to use plenty of paint on your palette. Otherwise uh, little dabs are not really going to do you. <laughs> And sometimes I've, I've noticed this, I've got some new tubes, and so I'm getting a lot of oil dripping out at the very beginning. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong with the paints or anything. It's just the way it is. Clean that mess up here for a second. Stick that. A little plastic bag that I hang right behind here that I can put my paper towels. Clean off this palette knife first. Then we're going to start working on the underpainting. I've got uh, just a, a few cheap brushes here, four cheap brushes that we'll be using today. This is a filbert style, this is a flat, and this is a bright, and then we got another filbert. Um, sizes usually don't matter, so in terms of uh, the numbering system, different uh, different manufacturers use different numbering. For what it's worth, let's see, the filberts are a 10 and a 5. And then uh, the flat is a 7. And then the uh, bright, let's see if I can even see it on here. Well, it's the, the marker indicating it. Oh, there it is, 11. And like I said, th these are brushes that can be bought anywhere, so... Nothing particularly great about them, other than if you are a new, uh, a new painter and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, they work well enough when they do work. Of course, they're not going to last all that well when you buy cheap brushes. They tend to wear out a little bit more than others. All right, let me just check and make sure that you can see the palette when I hold it up and mix. There we go. So what we're going to start with today is the Burnt Sienna, make a little pile here, dip into my water, we want this to go on very thin, and we're just going to sketch out the scene today. This is a country scene, a little lake, out on a farm. Okay, so that's the we got a row of trees coming down this way. And then we've got our main mass. I don't know where the main mass is gonna go. About 
in here. And our, our lake comes from this side. Let's go ahead and we're going to get this one tree line in here. Just looking at the, the big shapes. And there's a tree that's coming in from this side over here. I'll put that one in here as well. And along this edge, a little foliage here sticking out, so we're gonna add detail in there. And then there's some, some tree lines in the back area here. Here it is, a tree line. Falls behind these trees, so I'll have to lighten that color some. As that fills in that whole space. And then, even on this little hill, there's some little trees on it. Okay. So there is my opening sketch. And now we're going to refine the sketch by putting in the tonal values now. So we're going to darken our mixture some. Again, I'm going to use some burnt sienna here. And mix in some ultramarine blue. This will produce a nice dark. And our darkest darks are in this middle area. So we're going to start here. Now you don't have to be very careful in this, this step. What we're doing is just basically an underpainting with the tonal values that will provide a map <clears throat> that we can use later on when we're applying our colors. And notice that uh, at this point, the consistency of the paint, let me hold this up so you can see it, I'm just using this burnt sienna, so we haven't missed anything on the, the mixing palette. And coming back in here with, with these darker darks. This is also a little darker, so we're gonna... 
You also vary the pressure a little bit to vary some of these shades too. Uh, and for example, here it's not quite as dark, so I'm just touching this area lightly. There we go. All right. Now the next darkest is this these tree lines back here. I'm, I'm going to leave those as is. Now we're going to lighten it up so I can put the grass planes here. So we're taking our burnt sienna and come over here and grab a little bit of the titanium white and mix in to our mixture. I'll put a little bit of yellow ochre in there. I want to warm this mixture up. Always nice to have an underpainting that is nice and warm, especially for landscape paintings. Because we'll be coming in over top with some other temperature values. So this will make a nice underpainting. We will we'll actually use some of this in the final painting as we, we don't want to cover everything up. All right, so now we're going to come in here with the, the ground plane. Once again, we don't have to be too picky about this. Actually, that's too dark, so we're going to add some more titanium white to that mixture. I want it to be thin, so I'm adding some water to this water mixable oil. We come right back in over top of what we just put down to lighten those colors up. ground plane here. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre as we get closer to the viewer. So I'm just going to change that tonal value a little bit. Add a little bit of white. All right. And we'll be coming in over top of all of this with other colors. So we don't have to fuss too much at this point. And notice we're getting some different shapes. All of this is going to help us later on. Think of this stage as especially with landscape paintings, we're kind of putting the earth onto the scene. This is, uh, you could think of it as putting dirt on. And then what we're going to do next is, of course, what comes next, the grasses, the trees, other details on top of it. So if we were building a house, we'd start with the foundation and then we'd put up the walls, etc., ceiling, and so, in a similar manner, this is what we're doing. All right, so the two lightest lights in this picture are going to be the sky and the lake. So, 
and uh, we're going to tackle those now. I'm going to take a bunch of titanium white, put it here, and I want this to be the lightest color, but I still want it to be warmer than titanium white, obviously. So mixing that up and also want to make this relatively light. And we're going to fill in the, the top portion of our panel today with this. And then when we come back in over top of it, nope, we've got some other color coming through there, so we'll deal with that. And if we, we put it on very lightly, we'll be able to come in with thicker color over top of it. Remember your rule, uh, thick over lean in terms of oil paint. And so even though we're, we're doing this a la prima, so it's not quite as important as it would be if we were taking some days off of painting and coming back and and doing another layer over top of another layer, it's, it's still helpful because this layer is going to dry a lot quicker. It's going to set up at least and be a little bit sticky, tacky. So when we get to our thicker paint, we'll be able to apply it right over the top of this. And in some cases, it's nice to have a little bit of that underpainting mix in. And, and show through. Now we're going to use this color as well, even though not all the lake is this color, we're still going to use this for this color here. And that will cover up all of our canvas. There we go. And so now, now we've got a road map for a picture scene. Uh, take a break at this point and clean off our brushes. And you don't have to spend, excuse me, spend a lot of time cleaning them off with your uh, water. And I got a little one of those canisters here uh, filled with water instead of mineral spirits because of this uh, water mixable oil. But um, all you have to do is just pull that, pull that paint off with that paper towel as much as you can and you can still use this and now take a second here grab another paper towel and I'm going to clean off this palette it's not a very big palette so I don't want to contaminate my colors yet so we're going to Scrape this, but I might I might use this, so I'll stick this over there for now. I'll just put that leftover paint there, and then I'm going to take my paper towel and clean this mess up there. First off with a palette knife. And on the palette. Doesn't have to be super clean, just... Get most of the oil off of there. There we go. Now we're ready to start with our other colors. Now when starting the other colors over top of this, most uh, painters suggest that you go from your darkest dark to your lightest light. Now I would suggest that as well. And at this point, I'm still going to use a big brush. I'm going to use this large filbert just to, to uh, change it up just a little bit. And uh, in this reference photo, we got a lot of greens today. So we're gonna make this, uh, we're gonna start with our darkest dark is gonna be right across here with those trees. So we're gonna take, of course, ultramarine blue and our primary yellow. I'm 
it's very blue, so we need some more of the yellow. But it's not very dark. It's it's a very, it's a not a very natural green yet. So one of the ways that we can work on a limited palette with this is we're going to add some red. So this is the pyro red. Add just a little bit. And maybe you can see that darkening up. Now it's becoming what I would call a, a hunter green. A much more natural looking green than what we had before. And let me add just a little bit more yellow to that. All right, I think I'm ready now to apply this onto the palette. I'm still keeping it relatively thin because I'm going to go back over this again with some highlights. So, but this is going to be the predominant color in that main tree mass. And here, um, one, one thing that you can use, you notice with the land plane, I would use brush strokes that are horizontal. Since these are structures that are vertical, we're going to make most of our, structure, our, our brush strokes vertical to, to highlight that. And uh, we're going to, so we're going to go up and down motions. And then when we do our highlights, we're going to go across. And that will also help uh, the effect of, of the, uh, the scene. So you'll see how that works as we progress. And I'm applying it rather lightly. I want some of that dark underpainting to show here in this tree line. So I'm not trying to cover that all up. Kind of shooting to put the paint in the middle of the space that's been painted, but not very thickly. Now I'm not, I'm not putting a bunch of water into this mixture though. So I don't, I don't want it to drip at this point. And see how dark this registers? Like I said, I'm not intentionally covering everything. Take your time and apply a few strokes. And then, of course, I'm putting down a stroke, basically, and then putting more paint on. And I'm leaving the stroke alone once I put it on the canvas. And notice, too, right now, it doesn't look like a whole lot. It does, it just, it looks, it might even look rather amateurish to you as you, as you look at it. And that's part of uh, getting over the hang up of wanting something to look real detailed right away. You have to allow the process to play out. And then it will look better as the time passes. So, if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, wow, you know, um, there would have been a time early on in my painting, if I would have gotten to the stage, I might have just said, oh, I can't do this. This looks terrible. And um, I would have set everything aside and just said, oh, I just can't do it. Can't paint. No good. Maybe you are uh, someone who's trying to paint and, and you feel that way often. Give yourself a break. Remember that it will get better. And that it has to it has to look a little bit uh, dirty like this first. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water because it's getting pretty, pretty thick on my palette here. So just using that same green. And essentially this this uh, tree over here is that same base color. So it's not going to be identifiable yet until we put highlights on it. So, but I am going to come across and put a few strokes down here. And 
and I will help to to show the distinction later on. Now this area here, there's some dark greens in it as well. Since I've got this green on my palette, I'm going to put a few strokes down here. I'm going to vary the strokes a bit. Now that I'm looking at the photograph, there's actually a ridge here that has a dark green on it. So let me kind of put that in there as well. Almost looks like a line, so I'm going to... I don't really want it to look like a line, but... There we go. Now, once again, I'm not going to fuss over it. I'll be coming back and doing a lot of that later. Okay, so this is the primary green that we're using here. So, these sit back. These are not as close. Now, how do we get them to sit back? One, we could add some titanium white, but that could produce a, a rather cloudy mixture. So, what we're going to try first is the yellow ochre. Let's put a little yellow ochre in here. Which takes that, that value down. And now just a little bit of the titanium white. Not much at all. Because once you put it in, you can't get it out. Now, looking at that, we want to extend, I want to enhance, if you will, the fact that these are back there. So in the photograph, it doesn't, it's, there's not quite the same kind of contrast. So we're using our artistic license now as we apply this particular paint shade. So let's see. Let's see if it'll work. Ah, yes, I think I like that. So we're going to. Put this in. And since I don't want this to, to run, I'm going to put a little bit of my quick dry medium to help the, the flow of the paint. And notice I'm not being stingy about the paint. Do one stroke, get some more paint. Do another stroke. Go mostly, mostly in a vertical direction here. Maybe vary it a little bit by twisting the brush some. You're not painting a wall, you're painting a painting. Come back in over here. Leave a little bit of that brown showing. over here and I suspect that already your your mind is beginning to tell you that these shapes are trees now there's nothing here all we're doing is different colored variations and different brush strokes but the mind is trying to make sense out of it and that is part of the magic of painting is how the mind can can take something that doesn't have a lot of detail and yet it translates it as a lot of detail And because we did that underpainting, what's also happening is that the painting has a very warm feel to it right now. 
And that's what we wanted. And that's what you want because what this will produce is a little bit of broken color. As you can see right here, I'm leaving little, little dabs of that underpainting showing. All right, so that's that back ridge. This ridge, um, just slightly darker. So we're just going to take a little bit of the ultramarine blue and put it back into that mixture. Not much. I don't want this to, to stand out. I don't want it to be the focal point of the painting. So just a slight variation here. And the same type of strokes I'm going to be applying. And with the filbert, the filbert with that round edge, if you're pulling it down like this, kind of resembles the tops of trees, right? So, so without much effort, your mind is translating it as such. There we go. And there's that ridge and see how because it's a different value it's not really the different color it's it's a lighter color but it's it's the value that has changed as you saw on my palette I didn't I didn't put a different green there all I did was manipulate the green by the use of the yellow ochre and a little bit of titanium white to make it appear as if these areas sit back as the more pronounced and vivid colors come forward in the painting all right now now we got the the painting covered with paint and we're beginning to put the second layer on we can tell more and more what needs to come what we need to do or what needs to happen now in this sky scene the sky is actually relatively absent of blue it's uh it's a warm a warm kind of color we're going to come back with a little bit more uh titanium white to suggest some clouds up there. And we're not gonna to touch, we're not gonna put a bunch of blue up there. Uh, this sky is at, uh, I believe it was sunset when I took this picture. So we're gonna play on that. We still have some areas, of course, uh, as we work on them, as we're coming, we're gonna come and we're gonna work now that we got the major areas covered, we're gonna add some, what I would call details or highlights, uh, working from the back plane towards the front. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here at this point. Take my paper towel and once again, clean off this brush. Like I said, I don't think it does any good to just uh, clean this off with a bunch of water. What I tend to do is save a, a brush for your darks, save one for the lights, and that way you're not contaminating them. But at the same time, a little bit of hint of the other colors can actually help produce some color harmony because all of these colors that we're using uh, are creating each of these mixes. And so by the end of the painting, your eye is going to tell you that the, it, it looks like it belongs together. Now, um, as we get closer, what, what happens too is I'll, I'll use smaller brushes now. So now we're going to paint in some clouds. So we're going to take some titanium white here. And since we already got yellow in this background, I'm going to light, I'm going to um, add just a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Not much, just a little pinch. See how quickly that turns that color? What I hope is that this creates a nice contrast in that sky for us and then we can always come in with a little titanium white over top of this there in the the photo reference there are cloud formations all across relatively close to the edge of the trees so we're gonna 
and I'm kind of twirling the brush. You might notice this. I'm going to vary the shape some here. I'm going to put some strokes down, then I'm going to kind of leave them alone. And notice the tonal value is correct because when you squint, you can't even see. You can't even see these colors on there, I don't think. But that's all right. That's kind of what I'm, I'm after. I want this to be the same tonal value, just a different color. A couple of strokes. Come on in here. And partly what I'm also doing is I want to break up this big shape up here with some variety of, of brush strokes. And um, doesn't necessarily have to match what my reference photo that I took has on it. All right, I'm going to take a second here. I'm going to take and clean off this brush. And now to give a little bit more highlight here, I'm going to come back in and think of that blue that I just put down as the underneath side of the clouds, right? The underneath side's often a little bit darker than the top of the cloud. Now we're going to take straight titanium white and make a little pool of that over here. And I am just going to get my little brush wet enough. And now I'm just going to plop in a few places of titanium white on top of that blue that I put down. And I'm not going to try to, um, I try, the one thing I'm trying to do is make sure that these are unique brush strokes and not repeating a pattern. This might be a good time in the video, if you've been here this long, to consider subscribing. That would really help me out. And uh, go ahead and like the video if you like the video. You're always free to make some comments, questions, or things for me to consider in the next video. Trying out a little bit different materials today in terms of the video. I might I'll put together a video on just how I make these videos at some point, in case anyone might be interested in that. See how that's that's very, these are very small little details, but I think they create some interest and break that space up. Although. You notice I don't want this to become, I don't, I don't, this is not the focal point. It, the sky is certainly not the focal point. So I'm kind of remembering that. And I don't want to necessarily call too much attention to up here. There we go. So there's a string of clouds all across that sky. It's a very warm value sky with the sun coming in. And so I think, I think that works pretty good. In fact, at the very top of the sky, I'm noticing that there's a little bit difference of color. It's a little bit brighter down here than up at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use that for some variation. So back to that little blue, I'm going to add just a touch of blue again to this. And now I'm going to, I'm going to go back in and paint over top of the top portion of the sky a little bit so 
Let's see how this looks. So, not a lot. Just taking a few little brush strokes. Adding a little bit more of that blue. Just to take away a little bit of the warmth at the very top. To suggest that the sun is going down. And so it's actually getting a little cooler. I'm just lightly pushing that color along. I think I like this variety. I think that it breaks it up a little bit. Pull a few down so it doesn't look like it's unnatural. See over here, we'll pull that blue all the way down into the clouds. All right. There we go. There we have up there too. Now I'm going to come down a little bit closer to those clouds I think would look nice. There we go. Of course I could I could play with this for quite a while. Okay now we got these trees here and we want to show that there's some sun coming in and hitting parts of these trees. So now we're going to be looking at a value that's a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer. So we're going to use our green mixture that we already have on the palette and we're going to mix in a little bit of the primary yellow. and a little bit of the titanium white. And I don't want to change the tonal value, but I do want to change the color. So let's see if this is different enough to suggest some variation. I think it is. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter, a little bit more titanium white in here. And I'm just taking a few places here. This is a small filbert. And I'm placing them on, on the canvas where I see a little bit Oh, variety as that light is shining on it. So I'm going to continue that across the tops of these. And then I'll pull a few strokes down. And I'm actually pulling the brush off of there at places. I don't want this color all over it, otherwise it will uh, defeat the purpose, right? Then there's a spot here where there's a lot of trees getting, getting forward facing light. We're gonna do that by pulling these down and putting a top on those. Here the same way. And a few back here, not, not a whole lot, but a few suggestions of some light that, that's continuing to shine over here on these on these treetops.
Okay, then on the second row, same thing, we're going to add, but here, um, we're going to add a little bit more of the yellow. In fact, let's use the yellow ochre. So that this looks a little more yellowy than what we put on before. Not much, but just slightly. And once again, we're just dabbing a few spots to indicate where that, that sun is hitting. The sun's coming in from this way. go it'll make more sense once we get to this larger grouping all right now this is where we need our most vibrant yellows so now we can go ahead and we're going to take the primary yellow over here on our palette mix it into our green pile let's grab a bunch of it And give it a little bit of red to it as well. A little bit darker. Because we don't want it to be too, too big of a contrast. And this might be the this might be the right. Yes, actually, I think this is about the best, and then we'll go a little bit lighter later on. So we're going to, once again, lights coming in, touching some of these branches. Here we want more paint, but less touch. Kind of sculpt out some of the... Some of the shapes that you're seeing in the tree line. Just barely touching it with some darker paint. Kind of let the, the brush dance across parts of it. And you can twirl it, just circle it a little bit. Get some unique shapes up here. As that sun hits parts of this. Continue carrying this out. And it's going to be a little bit darker over this direction, so we're going to leave some of that part there. Come down this way a little bit more. There we go. All right, now. I see more of a, a yellow ochre color and burnt sienna 
in some of these trees that are in this line. And so now we're going to put some of those highlights on it. Once again, take your time. I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit with my paper towel. And then we're going to get a new paper towel. And we're going to bring in some, some real highlights using some of this yellow ochre. So moving some of this yellow ochre over here next to that green. And I'm going to put a little bit of titanium white into that mixture. It's also got a little touch of red in it. So a little bit of the pyro red. Not a lot. Just a little. Maybe a little bit more because you can always add a little bit more. Just go a little step at a time. I want this to be kind of a reddish brown. A little bit more, I think. There we go. It's almost, almost orange and pink now. So, like that. So I'm going to get that on. I'm going to put some of my quick dry medium on thinking about it into this mixture. Just a little drop. You don't need a lot. Now we're going to come back in with a little bit more highlights on top of the other highlights that we already put on there. There we go. And, and once we just barely touching the canvas. Remember, these are highlights, so we don't want to overdo it. Most of these are at the very tops of those trees. Notice how I'm barely touching some of these places. And of course, now you'll notice why we started with the darks, because when you start with the darks, look how easy it is to go back in with lighter values and get what you're after. Some of this over here this way. A definite spot right here. So we're gonna take advantage of what we're seeing. Also over here, there's quite a bit. And a few over here this way as well. A few right here would help us to delineate the trees that are in this area. A couple of spots over here as well. Now, the burnt sienna I see over in this area. So we're going to still keep this mixture. Take a little bit of the burnt sienna. That's probably too much. There we go. So I can change that tone. And actually, it's probably not dark enough. So a little bit more. A little bit of the ultramarine blue. Darken that up a little bit more. All right. Now there's this place over here on this tree that's darker, so this is where we're going to put this color. Just like we did the highlights, but we're wanting this to be darker. Now 
let your brush do some of the work for you here. Touching that to the canvas, especially right over here, a little bit like that. Okay. All right, and then there's actually a little bit lighter shade right in this area. So we're going to go back with our yellow ochre make a little pile over here a little bit of titanium white this time and a little bit more because I want this to just to really stand out a little bit more there we go I'm gonna put this color here where that sun shining And there's a few. I'm going to put a little bit more titanium white into this. And there's a few more spots that are just a little bit lighter than others. A couple that are right here. And then there's a few over here. And a little bit more white. So I'm going to make sure I go back and get some of that from my brush. See how that, that variation has now worked? Let me make sure that looks more like a, a tree there. there go. And so now we see, we can see that sunlight, can't we? I hope, come through. All right. And now we're going to turn our attention a little bit to the ground plane. And so we've got some greens that need to cover that, that brown. And once again, we need a little bit of a variety. So we're going to pull this off of this brush. I think I'm going to stick with this same brush. Or actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to, I'm going to switch to oh, this bright brush to do it. Yeah, I think I'm going to use the same green here, put some titanium white into it. Yes. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. This light shade. Pull across the grass plane back there. And it's mixing a little bit with the brown, which is fine. That's what I want. And a little bit of that showing through as well. I don't want to cover it all up. And then it's going uphill, so my brush strokes are going uphill a little bit. And over in this area, it gets a little darker, so we're going to put a little bit of blue back in. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. There we go. It's just a little bit of variety there. Not much. A 
and I can indicate that change. Let's take a step back. Yep, I think I like that. Now we're going to concentrate on this area here, and um, it looks a little bit, a little bit greener. So even even though we got that, we can take some ultramarine blue here. Now I'm going to use the primary yellow. Going slow. Don't want to overshoot the color I want. Almost there. I think this is it. So we're going to take a little bit. Yeah, that's what I want. I want this. Come down there. Just like that. And then here, we get a little bit darker. So, a little bit of ultramarine blue into that mixture. That should be enough to show a little bit of contrast here. Yep. Soften that little edge out there. Then there's actually a little bit of a, a yellow ochre in the grass showing, so we're gonna wipe that off. Give another paper towel here for a second. Take this mixture over here. Add a little bit. It's a little darker than that color. Uh, a little bit more of that burnt sienna. Okay. And a couple of Strokes there, I should do it. There we go. One right here. There we go. All right, now coming down, we're on this plane, so we're going to look at that grass and do a couple of variations in the grass there. It's similar to this color we already have, but a little darker. So, ultramarine blue. A little bit of the primary yellow. And this is pretty close. Let's get on the canvas and see what we think. Yep, I like this. It's, it's pretty much the same color as up there. Add a little bit more of the blue as we're going along here. Barrier brush strokes a little bit here. Maybe leave a 
those little little pieces of the that tan color shine through there. Think about we're we're now putting on some grass, right? Over top of the of the ground plane. This part of the ground's being shaded by the trees, and so it's taking on this green color from the combination of, of the shadow and the sky. We're gonna take that pretty much to this, this edge. There's a couple spots. There's like a there we go. All right. Now I'm gonna add some yellow. I'm gonna sharpen up some of this foliage here. Adding a primary yellow. Little bit more. All right, we're gonna take our brush and I'm just gonna touch it, leave it turning a little bit. I want some unique little shapes here along that dark that's already been placed there. Same thing along here. We're going to take this grass color, just lightly touching it, and using the brush head. And there's a few little spaces over on the other side here. There, getting a little bit of sun. All right. A spot or two right here where that sun's catching the tree makes sense to me. There we go. Let me hit the top of this a little bit. Okay. Now we're up to this very it's basically empty grasslands, but we want to we want to uh, make sure there's a little bit of contrast even in, in that space there. So We are going to take a little bit of this. Uh, earlier we did this burnt sienna. And so this is a neat color, I Bye, think. Dad. Bye. And we're going to mix this into this area here. Notice I'm just touch, barely touching the canvas. And the spots where I see some canvas shooting through is where I'm going to try to cover it up a little bit. Vary my brush strokes some.
on the reference photo you can see this there's just slight variations in the the way the light is affecting the grasses and their, their heights all right so i think that looks pretty good now now we're going to turn our last attention to the actual lake itself and there's um there's a spot where we're getting the the sky color so that that part's kind of already there so now what we need is a dark green so i'm going to clean i'm going to take a minute to clean off the palette because I want to make sure that this mixture is not interfered with with the other colors. Clean my brush, get a palette knife. Now time to scrape all these colors off. So I'm just going to scrape these off like we did before so we have, make sure I have room to work. And when you use a palette like this, sometimes your colors will slide a little bit. So we'll take care of that. So with this, you know, you just take the whole pile and put it back where it belongs there a little bit. I'm going to take this paper towel and we're going to wipe down the palette ourselves space for this good time to remind yourself if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so and uh, by all means give me comments if there's ways I can improve upon this process for these videos I'd be more than happy to try all right so now I'm going to use We'll pick this doesn't really matter all right so we need a, a darker green so we're going to start with the ultramarine blue a little bit of the pyro red making a dark purple and then we add yellow and as you can see this is a very dark green but there is a very dark green right here so we're going to start with this and see how well this works. And since it's water, we're gonna, we're gonna take the brush and go directly down. one brush stroke and then go get some more paint all right and then by this tree we also have some dark Dark green from this pond. Okay, now we're going to deal with the, the lighter area, which actually has a little bit of a blue in it. So, clean off this brush, save my pile of the light color. And then I'm going to turn to my small brush I use for the sky. 
And we're going to mix a little bit of blue, titanium white, a little bit of, that's too much blue. There we go. Actually, maybe a little bit more blue. Okay. We're going to pull this color down. Pulling it in one direction will help give the illusion that there's light bouncing off the top. Let's pull that across a few places. Get a little bit more of that. And there's a couple places where I'm going to give a hint of the sky reflecting the air. And along this edge, there seems to be a little bit of sky there as well. All right. And now what I'm looking at, there's also a couple of little details on the edge of this lake and that looks like a yellow ochre and a burnt umber I'm gonna mix those two together that sets up a little bit of an edge there it comes around here and we can actually see it all the way around it. So we're going to go pop in some of this right along that edge. And now I'm going to take a step back, take a look, see what I think, if it needs to be adjusted in some way. I think I'm happy with it, and so now I'm going to sign it. And because there's so so much of the direction is heavy over in this side, I'm probably going to sign it there. Oh, I'm noticing a couple of tree branches, so we're going to um, let's do that. We're going to mix in a dark dark. So we're going to take some ultramarine blue wow. and some pyro red, and we're going to make a very dark purple here. And let me, let me make sure we get enough paint here to do the job. Okay. Now I'm going to get my palette knife out for this one. Clean off this brush before I set it over here. Just faintly see a few branches. So we're going to put a couple of lines here, is what I'm shooting for. Not much, just a few lines that will indicate a couple of branches. there but I can fan that out a little bit.
step back and see how that looks. All right, I think it's, I think that painting is done. I'm gonna sign it, call it a day. Really appreciate you watching till the end. Here's a rubber tip device. I think they call this an eraser. And I just scratch my name into the paint. Like that. Well, until the next video, happy painting. And thanks again for joining me on this channel. And please uh, sign up so you can be the first to be notified when I uh, produce another painting. Bye now. Have a great day.